MedCram. MedCram.com. Welcome to another MedCram COVID-19 update. So we've talked before here at MedCram about the risk factors that COVID-19 poses from a cardiovascular standpoint. We've talked about the damage to the vascular endothelium. And so it should come as no surprise that there have been a number of studies that have come out to date showing a link between COVID-19 infection and cardiovascular morbidity. This paper here published in The Lancet in November of 2021 shows that COVID-19 is a risk factor for myocardial infarction. And it should be noted that even the influenza virus and influenza infection is a risk factor for myocardial infarction. There's also been discussion about the fact that COVID-19 and even the vaccines for COVID-19 are associated with pericarditis. And I wanted to give you a little bit of instruction as to how subtle those differences can be on an ECG. So this is a electrocardiogram. This is very cheap, very quick. It's easy to obtain on most patients. And as you can see here, we have a number of leads that are looking at the heart in a different way at different angles. And we get different types of information from the heart as we look at it from different angles. For those who are not facile with ECG interpretation, the first little bump is called the P wave. And then this spike is called the QRS and then followed by the T wave. And what we're looking at here is a patient with an ongoing ST segment myocardial infarction. This patient is having a heart attack here as we speak on the ECG. And the way we can tell this is because right where this QRS complex is coming down, there's an elevation here in the baseline between that and where it started out here, between the P and the R. So this is higher than this, but it's even more than that. We're seeing it in contiguous leads here. Two, which is facing towards the lower portion of the heart. Three, also towards the lower portion of the heart. And AVF, and we can see here that it's in these three contiguous leads. We don't see it in other areas. Uh, here, looking more towards the left lateral portion of the heart or even here on the right. It's limited to one particular area of the ECG. So this ST segment elevation is very suggestive of an inferior myocardial infarction. Now, generally speaking, in these types of cases, patients should go to the cath lab. If they're not able to go to the cath lab quickly and have an intervention to try to treat this, then another possible therapeutic intervention is to give a clot buster like TPA. TPA is going to dissolve clots all over the body, and particularly we're hoping the clot that has caused this myocardial infarction, and that's a clot that's blocking the coronary artery to this portion of the heart. So it's very important to understand this very quickly and to be able to make a rapid interpretation of the ECG. Now, something that may look similar, because it can also cause chest pain and it can also cause ST segment elevation, is something called pericarditis. And this is an ECG of somebody with pericarditis. And you can see here, we also have ST segment elevation. Notice that this bar here is higher than this bar. We see it here in lead one. We see it in lead two here. We see it in AVL. We're also seeing it here a little bit to the degree in these lateral leads. So V4, V5, V6. When we're seeing it in a lot of different leads all at the same time, that's suggestive that what we're dealing with here is pericarditis because the pericardium is the covering of the heart and it goes almost all the way around the heart. And usually what's associated with pericarditis is fluid that has seeped its way in between the heart and that covering so that there's pericardial fluid. Now, sometimes that can be bloody. And if you were to give TPA in this situation, there could be a massive amount of bleeding that occurs in between the heart and this protective covering, which could squeeze the heart down to the point where it would not be able to pump blood anymore. And that would be a disaster, obviously. So it's important in pericarditis not to give TPA, and that's why it's so incredibly important that TPA given in myocardial infarction, but not in pericarditis. And the fact that these can look similar is an important distinction that needs to be made so the right patient gets the right medication. So one of the hallmarks with pericarditis is we see this ST segment elevation in many different leads, and that is a sign that this could be pericarditis. Another sign is this ST segment elevation sometimes is concave first, and then the T wave goes up. Notice all the T waves are pointing up, so there's no T wave inversion. That's another sign that we're dealing with pericarditis. And also notice that this spiky QRS complex, there's not a first deflection down. That's what we would call a Q wave. We don't see that here either in this situation. 
Now we're going back to the myocardial infarction ECG, and you can see here, we see these spiky little things coming down. Those are Q waves, also suggestive that what we're dealing with here is a myocardial infarction. Of course, now with the advent of point-of-care ultrasound, we can now put an ultrasound on the chest and actually look at the segments of the heart to see if there's something called segmental wall motion abnormality, and that's consistent with a myocardial infarction or whether or not we see fluid around the heart, and that would be consistent with pericarditis. So this is very helpful as well. So as you can see, it's important to be able to understand how to interpret ECGs and also how to use and interpret ultrasonography if you want to quickly triage your patient one way or the other. Many of you may not know this, but we at MedCram have been educating healthcare providers for almost 10 years. And at medcram.com, we have a number of courses that are available including ECG interpretation, CHEM-7 results, antibiotics review, our COVID-19 ventilator course, also lung ultrasound, and the FAST exam, which goes over the findings on ultrasound of the heart. If you're a healthcare provider and you're interested in reviewing for tests or interested in medical education, join us at medcram.com for the best in online education. Thanks for joining us.